Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. Yingwei is an electric bike brand that just celebrated their fifth anniversary and they just released a very interesting series of new electric bikes. Now I typically don't review electric bikes unless there's something unique about them and in this case the X series caught my attention for being different than your basic run-of-the-mill cookie cutter e-bike and the fact that they claim a law-breaking 31 mile per hour top speed. Now the X series is a set of class 3 electric bikes and it also comes in three different sizes. The X20 with 20 inch wheels, the X24 with 24 inch wheels, the X26 which is what you see here with 26 inch wheels. Now the X20 is a much smaller folding bike with a less powerful motor, less range. It's pretty much completely different than the X24 and X26. Now Engway did send the X24 and X26, so we're only gonna focus on those two models today. And thanks to Arizona monsoon season, we're here sweating it out in my garage. So the X24 and X26 models share their electrical specifications. Both have brushless 48 volt, 1000 watt hub motors, and it can output up to 1200 watt peak at 70 Newton meters of torque. Both have removable dual batteries when combined are a massive 29.2 amp hours or 1400 watt hours. Both have a top speed of 31 miles per hour or 50 kilometers an hour and sport mode. Both have four inch wide fat tires and offer dual hydraulic disc brakes along with an eight speed Shimano transmission. Both bikes also share the same five shock suspension system, rear booster seat, independent throttle control, and color LCD readout. The first thing you're gonna notice about the X26 is its wild styling. This is the largest model and it has full suspension with five shocks. You have the typical front fork suspension, a set of air shocks in the back, and a center suspension. It also sports 26 inch mag wheels, check those out. And check out this, it has a dual battery. The main battery is actually in the seat tube and the secondary battery or the smaller battery is in the top crossbar. The seat tube battery can be turned on and off with a push button, which is right here. You might be able to see that green light from here. So you can leave that battery turned off if you like to keep it as reserve. Now the weight of the X26 is pretty steep with both batteries coming in at around 113 pounds or 51 kilos. Now let's move on to the X24, which this is in its folded configuration with the seat battery and the internal battery removed. This makes it the lightest configuration to move around and carry. Let me show you how quick and easy it is to put the batteries back in. So you have this dinky little 480 watt hour or 10 amp hour battery that goes inside the top. You make sure you put it with the lock facing down slide it up into the bar. Then you can use one of the two keys to lock the battery in so it doesn't get stolen. And lift and rotate, lock that in, and that section is ready. Now here is a massive seat post battery. So this only goes in one direction, obviously. Now believe it or not, this is the maximum setting for the seat. So you can literally set it this high just in case you're eight foot tall. Of course, the minimum setting is all the way down. Now you just lock it like this, and another key is provided to lock this in place if you don't want anybody to steal your seat and your battery. Now you do have to physically hook this cable up to the battery when you're gonna use it. So there it is with the cable attached. Now you're gonna notice something right away that's different about the X24 is that it's missing the very cool mag wheels that's on the X26 and on the X20. I was sad to find this out. In fact, I didn't even realize it until it showed up at my door and put it together. I'm like, wait a minute, why do I have spokes? I'm supposed to have those cool mags. Anyway, I'm not sure why they don't offer that. Now, this bike is not only a smaller frame with smaller wheels, it's also five pounds lighter, weighing in around 108 pounds or 49 kilos. The overall stature and folding size on the X24 is smaller and it's designed for smaller riders. So if you're under five foot eight, you're definitely gonna want the X24 instead of the X26, because even folks that are just under six foot are gonna find the X26 on the larger side. For example, the X24 and minimum seat height is just over 35 inches, and the standover height is just under 29 inches. The X26 minimum seat height is a whopping 37 inches and the standover at 30 inches. Angway states the X26 is for riders up to six foot five. Both bikes do, however, have a capacity of 330 pounds. So that should cover even the hulkiest of hulksters, regardless of height. Now, like virtually all other e-bikes, the X-Series does offer pedal assist modes, which are configurable within the display settings. 
So you just have to use the up and down on the controller, you'll see this number changing from zero, which is no pedal assist, to five, which is maximum. Now pedal assist means that the bike will apply a certain amount of motor assistance while you pedal. Now you can turn this completely off if you don't want any assistance at all and just leave it at zero. Now the X-Series being a class three bike means it allows assistance up to 28 miles per hour in standard mode. This is street legal in most of the United States, but it does vary from state to state and locality. For example, certain parks may ban e-bikes altogether or just bikes over a certain power or class. Some municipalities will only allow a class two bike with a 20 mile per hour top speed. Now, if you live in an area that doesn't allow e-bikes on the road over 20 miles per hour, you can in fact limit your top speed inside of the settings to keep you legal. Now you probably heard of the claim of 31 miles per hour in the intro. Now there's a special condition for this to take place because class three bikes in order to maintain legality should be limited to 28 miles per hour of electric assistance. Well, Engway lets you put the bike into sport mode which allows for a limited off-road boost up to 31 miles per hour for a few minutes at a time. Then it reverts to standard mode where the limit again is 28 miles per hour until a 10 minute timer resets before sport mode can be used again. Now I can see this extra power being very useful for climbing hills or just keeping up with traffic. And I already asked the company if there is some way to keep sport mode enabled indefinitely and they said no. However, there is a simple hack that I figured out that will bypass that 10 minute waiting period in sport mode. All you have to do while riding is simply turn the bike off and back on again, and then just arrow up to change pedal assist to five, hold down the middle button to re-engage sport mode. Yeah, it does take 10 to 15 seconds of thumbing around, but you can ride at 31 miles per hour indefinitely by doing this simple trick. Now, this wouldn't be a Hobotech review without some technical shenanigans. So I did go undercover to a few secret locations to perform some crazy experiments, including a double-fisted handlebar test. Really, we're just gonna perform a range test, a top speed test, a power test, and a braking test. So kick back with your favorite double-fisted beverage and let's get started. Greetings, undercover professor here. I'm out testing the Yingwei X24 electric bike. I'm gonna go ahead and put some miles on it today so that we can figure out the actual range compared to what they claim. Okay, so right here I have this Kuzpo GPS monitor and what this does is it actually gives me a very accurate reading of the miles per hour, distance, and speed. So I'll be able to use these to determine certain things about the bike. Now, the built-in display right there, it says we're at 100% charge. We're gonna go put a couple of miles on it and see what kind of range we get. Back in sport mode, we're gonna just keep it floored. Twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. I gotta slow down for this turn. Okay, straight away. Thirty one. That's all she wrote. 31, 31 and a half. All right, that's it. That well, wasn't too bad. Greetings, undercover professor here. We're back a few days later. Now the weather is better at a secret undisclosed location to do some further testing of the Yangway X24. So what we're gonna do today is some zero to 60 foot runs. I got these cones that automatically time me between two 60 foot cones. 
And knowing my weight, the weight of the bike, I should be able to use some simple math to figure out how much power is this motor putting out. They say it's a thousand watt motor that can do a maximum of 1200 watts. So we're gonna find out which is it, a thousand watts or 1200. So here's the bike, it is fully charged. I will be running it in sport mode. We're gonna give it a one foot run out, just like they do on cars when they test them on the track. So the first foot won't count and it'll start the timer there. And this is the 60 foot mark, you see from my tape measure. And it looks like I accidentally triggered the start. <laughs> so, oops. So you can see here, this actually will time how long it takes for me to get between those cones. Okay, let's start the first run. Okay, we're in sport mode, maximum pedal assist, 100% battery charge. We're one foot from the starting line. I'm gonna go ahead and hold the throttle down, then let go of the brakes. It's gonna give us the quickest start. So remember, I'm not pedaling. Three, two, one. Okay, so it was 13.9 miles per hour. Time was 4.61 seconds. Let's go ahead and do another run. All right, second run, 4.55 seconds, maximum speed 14.5 miles per hour. Run number three is 4.46 seconds at 13.2 miles per hour. Let's do two more. I spent all the time setting this up. We'll to take the best of five. Run number four, 4.38 seconds at 13.8. That's actually a pretty good time. Okay, fifth and final run, 4.35 seconds at 14.2 miles an hour. That seems pretty good. Next, we're gonna do some controlled stops from 12 miles per hour. I was gonna do 20, but I realized I can't get up to 20 in here, and 20 is going pretty darn fast. Okay, so let's go. Three, two, one. There we are, 12 miles an hour, and we stopped in 13 feet. Let's do another run. That is using both front and rear brakes as hard as I can go. Okay, we stopped in 12 feet that time. I think I had a little more control. I tried really hard that time. That was 12 feet. Okay, we're at 12. I am locking up the back wheel when I did it. 12 foot, almost exactly, again. So those were some pretty good results. You can see my back tire, because I lock the front and back up at the same time, the back tire's back here. So it's not like I stopped early. I don't want anybody to look at that and say, oh, you stopped early. No, trust me, I was nailing those brakes as soon as I got to these yellow cones. I was watching my speedometer. As soon as I saw the yellow cones, I braked. So very consistently, 12 foot mark is right here. So you can see that's where my tire stopped three times in a row. Pretty good stopping. This does have dual hydraulic brakes, front and rear with discs. And even though it's really heavy, it stops really well. All right, for the record, the final odometer reading is 7.1 miles. So we put 7.1 miles on the batteries. So what I'm gonna do now is take the batteries out of this and charge them up and we'll see how many watt hours it takes. All right, we're back in the lab. Now I was kind of surprised when I pulled this battery out that it was as small as it is. It's only 480 watt hours or 10 amp hours at 48 volts. Now this is the battery that actually sits in the top part of the bike. So what I'm doing is I have the original charger that the bike came with. You can see it right here, it's got a red light on it because I am charging this battery. And what I do is just with a set of adapters, I'm running it through the shunt. I really like this little shunt. This was real cheap shunt with a battery monitor on it. Tell me exactly how many watt hours I'm pumping back in. We have this battery monitor set up in between the charger and the battery. Fortunately, these are 5525 ports, so I have plenty of adapters that work just right. You can see here, Anderson to 5525. So now all I gotta do is just wait for the green light on the brick, and then we'll be able to see exactly how many watt hours we pump back into this battery. We'll rinse and repeat this for the second battery, we'll find out exactly combined how many watt hours did it take to go 7.1 miles. So here are the final results of the tests. First, the range test. After 7.1 hard miles pulling well over 300 pound bike and rider combined, the X24 used a total of 288 watt hours from both batteries, which extrapolates to 40 watt hours per mile. Now we can make a good guesstimate that with 1400 watt hours available, you can expect a whopping 35 miles of range under similar conditions. Smaller riders on flat paved surfaces with fully inflated tires and cooler temperatures could very easily get 50 to 60 miles. They do claim 62 miles of pure electric range and you could pretty much hit that mark just by riding at normal pedal bike speeds 
between 12 and 15 miles per hour. Most of my riding was done near or at top speed, and I'm no lightweight. I'm actually kind of surprised I can still get 35 miles beating the tar out of this thing, and I even have the tires slightly deflated for better traction on gravel. Second was the top speed test. We were able to pretty easily hit the claimed 31 miles per hour limit in sport mode repeatedly. The bike reverts to 28 miles per hour in normal mode, which it can hold on level ground pretty much indefinitely. Next was the power test. This one required some actual math to figure out. Fortunately, I have a degree in science, so it was no sweat. Here are the results of each of the five runs using the formulas acceleration equals velocity over time and power equals mass times acceleration times velocity. The first result, we did 13.9 miles an hour over 4.61 seconds. The formula tells us that it actually took 1,225 watts to propel the bike. Second result is 14.5 miles an hour at 5.55 seconds, but I was kind of sketchy when I did the math, it said 1,351 watts. I went back and watched the replay from my GoPro, which was mounted on my chest. It actually shows that after I passed the finish line, the miles per hour for some reason jumped. And so the GPS logged it as 14 and a half when it was close to like 13 too. So we're pretty much gonna scratch that result. Third run was 13.2 miles an hour at 4.46 seconds. That came out to 1143 watts, so that makes sense. Fourth was 13.8 miles an hour at 4.38 seconds. That came out with a reasonable 1273 watts. Remember there is a little bit of margin of error here. My testing equipment and procedures aren't perfect for electric bikes. I just wanna know, am I generally in the right wattage zone? Um, lastly, 14.2 miles an hour at 4.35 seconds, the fastest run of all, says we did 1,358 watts. And again, I reviewed the GoPro footage. It shows that I braked a few feet too late and basically it allowed the speed to tick up higher than it should have. So we're gonna scratch that result too. So if we ignore the two outliers that were over 14 miles an hour, the results average out to 1,213 watts which seems to be enough proof to me that the motor does in fact output 1200 watts at maximum throttle. Now it's not gonna hold 1200 watts indefinitely. At some point it is going to reduce that power down to 1000 watts and that is the nominal rating of the motor. Finally, we have the results of the braking test. We were able to get a consistent 12 foot stop at 12 miles per hour on hard packed dirt with light pea gravel. This is pretty good seeing that it's stopping over 300 pounds. I noticed the brakes actually felt better after some hard stops, and this is likely due to the pads seating on the rotors. All right, down to the nitty gritty. What do I think about the X-Series Igway bikes? The biggest downfall of the bike is definitely its incredible heft, but that's also its saving grace because while it's not a bike you're ever gonna do any serious mountain bike trails with, it's perfectly comfortable on dirt and gravel and poorly paved roads thanks to its pretty heavy weight. The four inch fat tires help absorb a lot of the smaller bumps. The five point suspension absorbs a lot of the bigger stuff. Even things like cattle guards, potholes, and short curbs are barely noticeable on the X24. It's easily the most comfortable electric bike I've ever ridden. And the fact that I didn't even have to immediately swap the seat out for a fat person seat means that the suspension is totally adequate. It's also very stable at high speeds, and that's not always the case with these fat tire bikes. A lot of times they're all over the place, especially on gravel. This thing's rock solid. I feel like I can pretty much do top speed on most of the fire roads around here. And of course, the number one thing that caught my attention was the looks. This thing is a real head turner, and pretty much the first word out of everyone's mouth when they see it is wow, and then they ask me a question about it. The range is also fantastic and a real shocker. I'm used to bikes that maybe get 20 miles on throttle only if I'm wrecking it at 20 mile per hour top speed. And this one I'm pushing upper 20s, and the X24 is still getting 35 miles. That is thanks to that whopping 1400 watt hours worth of batteries. That's like, almost double what you get on most other bikes. So everything isn't rainbows and unicorns. There are some minor gripes. I do wish the bike was either a step through or this top bar was a little bit lower, making it easier to get off and on and straddle in place. Let me put, tell you right now, I got my feet flat and um, my goods are getting icy cold from the metal bar. Uh, I also wish it had a standard right-hand twist throttle over that really kind of silly left-hand thumb throttle because your thumb's gonna get sore. 
Fortunately, you can just enable cruise control, and if you like, the bike will hold the throttle for you. Lastly, they do include a rear seat, but no foot pegs for a passenger. And because this thing has a 330 pound capacity, you can certainly carry a passenger, so that's a little bit weird. Another oddity that Engway gives you two keys for the bike. Neither one of them starts it or locks the ignition. The keys are basically just for locking the batteries to the bike so they can't be stolen. However, that doesn't prevent anybody from just pushing the power button and riding away. So make sure you use a really good lock through the rear wheel when parking in public. Now, Engway, like most of the other competition, does offer a one-year warranty on the X-Series bikes. It would be nice to see the industry start to increase these warranties like they have on power stations. Overall, the X-Series is a great bike, and while, yes, there are cheaper ones out there, the Engway offers full suspension, higher speeds, and more range than anything else I've seen in the market for less money. I'd say this is a natural upgrade from something like Electric 3.0 for an intermediate rider that wants a better performing, faster, more comfortable ride. All right, that about wraps it up. If you wanna learn more about the Angway X-Series bikes, the link to the website will be in the description of this video below and here at the bottom of the screen, along with a QR code you can scan on a mobile device. It'll take you on over to the Angway store page where you can check out the X-Series bikes. Make sure you do use that discount code listed in the description, because that's gonna knock a significant chunk of change off if you decide to purchase one of these bikes. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box.